Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is the monthly director call. So um, we have, I mean, it's been an exciting, well, season altogether. Um, but it's, it's really been an exciting last couple of months. And we've had a lot of promotions. We've had um, a lot of new team members added. And so with the group growing, I think it's only, only fair that we kind of make sure that we are um, balanced and set up to be able to help everybody who's coming on. So we're going to talk um, about coaching this month and how to create like shared meaning or shared culture. Um, you have to be able to really gain your independence as a leader and kind of set yourself up for this is what I am as a leader, right? Um, so gaining that independence and really realizing that you are simply there to help people to realize and develop all of the goals, all of the things that they want this business to do for them. That's honestly what our goal is as a leader. And it is to really just define the fact that this is something that could be anything for anybody, whatever they need it to be. And as long as they are focused on their why, and as long as they are focused on their personal goals and what they want to achieve every single month, then for us as leaders, it's simply for us to be asking them the questions that are going to help break, begin dialogue. It's going to be um, really looking for ways that we can add value to them in their business. And it's looking for ways that we can help them to more or less edit in their business. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. So first of all, first and foremost is creating a team culture. Um, you want to have that self-confidence, you want to have that financial confidence, and you want to have that sense of belonging. Remember guys that the culture that you want to create is the culture of you want people to not want to leave, right? Because they get so much out of the business, but also out of the team. And I'm not even necessarily talking about like the business aspect of it. I'm talking about friendships. I'm talking about building those relationships. Um, with Sensi, you know, I will forever say I am grateful. I am thankful. I am blessed that I have it in my life because I wouldn't be the same person I am today if it weren't for everything that I've been through and everything that I've grown into was Sensi. And a lot of my very close friends are people who I've met through this journey. Um, even if for whatever silly reason, Sensi were to go away tomorrow, which obviously it's not, right? But if it were, right, like what would I do? Well, I'd still have my same community and I'd still have all of that. So that's really, a big piece of, of creating that culture and creating that team. Um, when we're coaching, we really want to help them to work smarter and not harder. Um, I say that a lot and it's super true. Uh, I do the same thing with my husband and I try and, uh, share with him and his, uh, in his, leadership role at work. And I'm like, you have to figure out ways that they can work smarter and not harder in their roles. And so he looks for that now. And it's, it's, it's really eye opening to him to be able to see it from that point of view, because I will tell you that for a lot of years, right? Like I, I didn't, um, my focus was a little bit different maybe than others because I, I'd never really thought that I would get to the point or that it could be where I was going to work my Sensi business full time and I was going to leave my career. Um, I put myself back through college. Um, I paid off a lot of student debt. Um, 
and really kind of dug my heels into my career. And it was something that I always said that I was never going to leave no matter. And I always said it like, no matter what happens with Cincy, right? Like I'm always going to have my career because for one, you know, it's security with my, my job and it's, you know, it's this and it's that and health insurance and the whole nine yards. Right. And so when it happened that my position was being outsourced and I could step back and look and say, okay, what do we want to do in this, this position? And when Justin and I had that conversation of, I was going to officially retire, it was scary. It was, um, filled with anxiety. It was filled with fear. I had so many sleepless nights around that time because I honestly was so worried about the unknown or what could happen. Um, and so it took me a while to kind of get into the group and, and it happened for me at the same time that I became director. So imagine <laughs> getting and earning that, that director promotion and then having another huge life-changing event such as the career that you've been focused on for the last 10 years is now done. And now you're gonna stay home full-time and now you're gonna do this full-time. Oh yeah, and you're a director. And so you need to be able to lead your team and continue growing and build more leaders and all the things. I was a mess, I was a mess. But at the same time, I couldn't necessarily convey that to my team, right? Because as a leader, I didn't want to be, you know, the mess that they were like, this is the person we're following. <laughs> okay. Um, I didn't want that, right? So I had to project and I had to focus not only on my business, but on creating leaders. And so being able to pour myself in like that, it was a unique opportunity to say the least. And I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about self-discipline and again, working smarter and not harder. So really kind of fine tuning all of the skills that I learned like in, in life and in, in that role per se, right? From my career but also for my Sensi journey. So how do you really know the difference between a trainer and a coach, right? So here's the deal. Um, in every single one of my outside of Sensi careers, jobs, what have you, um, I'd always been in some type of a trainer role, right? And I was a trainer. So, how can you tell the difference between a trainer and a coach? This is what I really want you guys to kind of split. So it really comes down to how you approach it. But a trainer tells, whereas a coach will ask questions. Okay, a trainer tells you what to do. A coach will ask questions to prompt responses. A trainer knows best, right? Here, I've done it this way. This is how it should be done. A coach realizes that the student knows best. Why does the student know best? Well, that's because the student is the one who is in that particular position, right? Remember how I talk a lot about you know, this is not, or this is a build your own business, right? The way that I work my business is different than how you work your business. Your life looks different than mine. So therefore your business is going to look different than mine, right? A trainer sets the goals, whereas a coach lets the student set the goals. If I come to you and tell you what your goals are going to be for this month, you're going to either say that's not possible or I don't think I can do that, or um, I've never even come close to that. So how in the world is that gonna be my goal, right? A student knows where their limitations are, knows where like that comfort bubble is, and knows, yeah, if I can push a little bit past that, that should be my goal, right? 
We don't want them to be comfortable, but we want them to push themselves outside. And that also at the same time of allowing them to set their own goals, it allows them to take a sense of ownership over what they're doing and putting into their business. And that my friends is huge, huge. A trainer finds mistakes. They can come to you, they can tell you exactly the things you did wrong, right? Spot them a mile away. Whereas a coach cheers on and supports finding better ways together. So if we step back from this trainer and coach perspective, right? I don't know about you guys, but when I think of trainer, I think of um, more, more or less like a micromanager, right? Like that person is going to tell me do X, Y, and Z and do it during one, two, and three, right? During these time frames, this is how you do it. This is how you word it. This is what you do. And then you're going to get these results. A coach is really going to allow that team member to really kind of flourish and find their inner confidence and to find their own voice as a business leader and also as a leader themselves, right? Because we hope that our team members are doing that, that they're building their teams, that they're growing, right? That they're sponsoring new team members, that they're having those conversations. And when they're having those conversations, do you want that person texting you or calling you during the conversation saying, okay, she said no when I asked if she wanted to join. So now what do I say? Is that what you want to happen? No, you want that team member to be self-reliant and to be able to know that they have the ability to do what they need to do for their business. We have to put faith and commitment and trust into that relationship with our team members so that they themselves can then grow and bloom from that. If that makes sense, I hope it does. Now let's look at motivating versus inspiring. So when we ask the question of where does motivation come from, motivation really at the root of it, motive, motive, right, is having a reason, okay? So having a reason to do something. And we have to realize that we cannot motivate somebody to do something, right? You can tell me all day long, Jackie, you need to go to the gym and you need to go in and walk your miles and do your reps. And then you can go relax on the hydro bed, right? I always look forward to the hydro massage. It is my favorite thing. Um, but you can't tell me to do that. And I'm going to wake up and be like, oh, I'm so excited. So you cannot motivate somebody to do something, right? You can't. You can tell them all day, you know, you should do this because it's better for your health or you should uh, grow your team because your paychecks will get bigger because you'll end up getting paid a title. Okay, let's, let's look at the compensation plan together, right? If they are worried about it or if they're not buying in, then or having the accountability, then again, there's no motivation. You can, you can talk motivational quotes and speeches all day long, and it's not going to make a bit of difference. It's literally going to go in one ear and out the other, and it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to make a difference. Now, let's pull back and let's look at inspiration versus motivation, right? With inspiration, how can you inspire your team? Well, you can inspire because you can draw from your experiences. You can give out that, hey, this is what I did. These are the steps that I took and I had really great success with this. Maybe you can find a way to be able to do this and put your own spin on it, right? Maybe I could, that's inspiring, right? 
that's getting them to kind of take it in and think, how can I do that? How can I replicate what they did? Inspire the root, right? Remember, motivate is, is part of motivation, right? So inspire means to inspire is, is like, I don't know if it's the Latin term or, or like the literal literal meaning, but inspire is to take in, right? It's to take things in. And to inspire someone, for someone to be able to take something in, they have to do it by you leading by example. Like we talk about leading from the front, right? If they, if your team does not see you working your business, if your team does not see um, how you have new people, uh, how you're sponsoring new people and having those joint conversations, if they're not seeing you, you know, making samples, if they're not seeing you making posts on social media, if they're not seeing you doing the things, then where is that inspiration going to come from to work their business? Are you just blindly holding your breath, hoping that they're gonna, you know, have an amazing month this month? And they hopefully know everything and like the releases that are coming out and at the starry Christmas warmer is gonna come back on Thursday, right? Do they know all these things? Are you just hoping that they're checking their news tab and hoping that they're watching the Facebook groups and cross them the fingers that they're paying attention out there? No, no. As leaders, we have to lead by example. We have to be leading from the front and we have to be doing that because not only because they need to know how to learn how to do it for themselves, but also because that is what is going to inspire them to want to work their business. Because remember, we're not, we can't motivate them to do it. We have to inspire them to do it. And inspiration doesn't just come from sitting on a couch and binge watching Netflix all day. I've tried, does not work. It does not make any difference. I wanted to share this quote with you because I really, really love it. And it's one of those quotes um, that I found during a, I want to say it was a leadership training I did at one point in time. Pretty sure it was with Sensi. <laughs> Pretty sure it was, but it's, it's an Albert Einstein quote. And it's setting an example is not the main means of influencing others. It is the only means. Setting an example is not the main means of influencing others. It is the only means. Leading from the front, leading by example, working your business, showing how you're working your business, showing how you're showing up for your business, showing how you're in the know and you've read the news tab lately because you know the warmers that are coming out and you know the new releases that are about to happen. Good quote. So leaders need to walk the walk and talk the talk. And this shows that we are truly caring about inspiring our team. Because you can tell your team all day long that you want to motivate them, you're here to cheer them on. But again, if you're not inspiring people to work their business and you're not giving them a reason to do it, we as leaders have to give them a reason to do it. And that reason has to come from them, from within them. We have to empower them. And I'll go back to my, my whole thing is I want to pull the magic out of other people because everybody has it there. Most of us don't realize that we have it until we give it and we see it. Again, you're not gonna motivate somebody to do that. It's, it's just not gonna happen. 
So who should we be coaching? Remember, we're not a trainer, okay? We are not here to train. Okay, that's why we have the training center. That's why we have um, um, Sensi events, right? Like world tour is coming. That's why we have family reunion. That's why as leaders, as directors, right? We've got leadership retreats, things like that, right? Those are all things that are there for our training benefit, right? Training is different than coaching. We are not here to train our team members. We are here to coach. You have to understand the difference. So who should we be coaching? We should be coaching new consultants. And I don't want you guys to just think that you need to focus only on your frontline because one of the main things that was an eye opener for me in my business as as a leader was knowing that my next directors were not necessarily going to come from my front line. They can come from anywhere in your team. It can be Sally's friend, Jane, who sponsored Jim, who sponsored Bonnie. And Bonnie could be the one who ends up promoting to director. And then Bonnie becomes your first generation director because there's no other directors between you and Bonnie. This is why it is so important for you to not have those blinders on as a leader, to know that your up and coming leaders may or may not be your front line. They may or may not be. Therefore, you have to be reaching out to everyone. You just do. If that's what you want to do, if this is what you want to grow to be, then this is what you need to do. This is the way. We should be coaching those who are working and who are actively being a consultant. Oh my gosh. I've ha I don't even know how many conversations I've had on this topic just within like the last two weeks, okay? Here's the deal, guys. If you have people or someone on your team who you have tried to inspire, you've tried to, you know, hey, this is what I'm doing. Why don't you try this? Um, maybe you've had a coaching call. Maybe you have, you know, made sure that they know of all the trainings that are going on. Hey, don't forget there's that training on on Friday, and then there's another one on Sunday, if you can't make the one on Friday, and then blah, 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 right? All the things, you've done all the things, and they still are not working their business because they've got absolutely zero sales. When you do talk to them and you say, hey, what's going on in your business? How are things going? And they're like, ah, nobody wants to buy anything. Or sometimes you'll get the response of, oh, I don't know, I haven't had time. Do you know how many people come to me asking me, Jackie, what do I do? How do I break through to these people? How do I get through to them? Here's the cold, honest truth, my friends. You cannot want it enough for somebody else to do the work. Remember, you cannot motivate someone else. You can't give them a reason. You have to inspire them. And if you're not able to inspire them, then you can, you know, put up the happy-go-lucky positive posts all day long on your Facebook page, but it's not gonna do jack squat. I'm sorry, but it's not. And so what we have to do as leaders is we have to be able to say, okay, I see you. I see you, Bonnie. I see you working your tail off over there. And then I see Jane, who's maybe Bonnie's sponsor, right? And Jane hasn't done anything in like four months. Zero sales, never shows up to in any of the Facebook groups, is never posting when you do reach out text or email or a Facebook message, they are never responding back, right? What can you do with Jane? You can't do anything. 
So you have to then put your focus on the ones who are putting in the work, who are putting in the time, who are reaching out saying, hey, I need help. I'm, I'm doing this Facebook party. Yay. Good for you. All right. Let's see. Where are you at? What can we do? Where are you at? What can I help you with? Right? Those are the people that you need to be focusing your time, your energy, and your intentions on. Because a, they're the ones who you're going to be able to inspire. B, they're already motivating themselves, right? Remember, motivate comes from within, right? They have their own reason, whether it's income, whether it's friendship, whatever, right? We don't, we don't know everybody's why, but hopefully we get to know most of them. But there's a why. There's a reason that they're doing what they're doing. So that's there. So those are the people that we're going to pour our time and energy and effort into, not the Janes who are doing nothing and don't respond and are ghosting. It's sad, but it's a cold, hard truth. Because I can tell you personally over the years, before I even became director, that I thought I was supposed to save everybody, right? The Titanic was going down and I had to make sure everybody was on the lifeboats because otherwise then it looked like I was failing as a leader and I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. And it's my fault that they ended up quitting or it's my fault that they ended up dropping off. Newsflash, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You can only do so much. They have to be able to put in the time and the work and the effort. And the people who are, are the ones that need your attention. Those are the ones who need your inspiration. So that is where you water the grass. You also need to be coaching those emerging leaders. Okay, same, same type of thing, same wavelength, right? The ones who are reaching up, the ones who you can see are sponsoring new team members. The ones you can see are answering questions in the Facebook groups. Those are the people that we should be coaching. And we should also be coaching those re-engaging consultants. And those are more or less the consultants who maybe they have uh, rejoined Sensi. Or maybe they've been a consultant for a while and all of a sudden you start to notice when you're pulling reports or when you're talking to them or on the group pages that suddenly they're starting to kind of, wow, they're, they're posting in the group or, oh, I see that they had an amazing month last month in PRV and oh my gosh, look, they sponsored two more people last month, right? They're emerging or they're re-emerging from what they've been as a consultant. I myself re-emerged many times throughout my career with Sensi, but it was that re-emergence of my inspiration saying, I can do it. I know what I'm doing this time. I want this. Those are the ones that we need to be coaching. Those are the ones we need to be spending our time and energy with. We also, as leaders, we really, really need to drive home accountability. And we have to do that with our no judgment glasses on. This is a judgment-free zone, right? Everybody's got struggles. We do not walk in anybody else's shoes. We do not know exactly what somebody else is going through. Sometimes you have no idea what somebody is going through because maybe online or maybe on the team chat or maybe on the Facebook page or whatever, right? They are just projecting this happy-go-lucky, life is wonderful, I am so excited to be alive vibe, right? When we all know that sometimes those are the people who may need our help the most, but they're not willing to show it and they don't want to ask and that's just it, right? So we always have to just be on the assumption that we don't know what someone else is going through. Even though it may seem like everything is great, right? Never assume, never assume that everything's going well. And we need to be able to support and encourage our team members, our emerging leaders. Remember, this is a community that they've joined. And again, as leaders, they are looking to us for inspiration. So we need to be able to give back. And we have to, absolutely have to, have the don't 
quit mentality. You guys remember Orville Thompson's quote, the one that I love the most, right? Learn to rest, not to quit. Learn to rest, not to quit. It's a big thing. It's a big, big thing because let me tell you, it is really easy to quit and walk away. Super easy. I almost did it three different times in my Sunsy journey. Three different times. I got to the point to where I even had the conversation with my husband and I was like, Justin, I am not doing this anymore. I'm done. I'm over it. I, whatever it was that was going on at the time, right? But I didn't because somewhere I found that inspiration from another consultant, another leader that I looked up to or mentored. Those are the people, those are your tribe. And those are the people that you surround yourself with. I say it a lot, but your tribe is truly what is gonna get you through not just in Cincy, but in general, right? It's what's going to get you through. The people that you surround yourself with, the people that you get inspiration from, those are the people that you need to be pouring into and you need to be following and you need to be saying, they're so inspiring to me. I want to breathe that in. I want to take that in as my inspiration and go, okay, how can I do that? That's a big thing for accountability. Big thing. So coaching, coaching is, I don't want to say it's hard and it's definitely not easy, but it is something that is essential in your business as a leader. It's essential. And by creating that shared meaning, by creating that team culture, by looking for ways to inspire, not motivate, by looking for how you can coach, not train, and being able to pour into the people who are those emerging leaders, who are those people who are hungry for it, who are the ones showing up. And the other ones who are not, that's fine. They can just sit right over here and marinate. Let me know when you're ready. I'll be here. Why? Because I have the don't quit mentality, right? I will rest when I am tired, but I am in no way quitting. So I'll be here if you decide to pour into this business. Because this business is going to be here for them. Hopefully they stick around. Doesn't mean to say that all is going to be roses, right? Because let me just tell you, you're probably going to lose some team members along the way. And that's okay. They'll either come back when they are ready at whatever point, or this just wasn't for them. And that is okay. Just like if you were to ask somebody to host a party or ask somebody if they want a sample, right? Or ask somebody if they want to order from you and they say no, do you cry your eyes out and go home and say, I'm quitting, I'm not gonna be a sensei consultant anymore? No, it's the same thing with those team members. So take that same mentality of, you can tell me no and I will make it to tomorrow. I promise you, I will sleep just fine tonight. <laughs> Do the same thing with those team members who you just can't seem to engage them. Just know that it is not on your end. As long as you have done your due diligence, you've reached out, you've tried, you've done what you can, right? But they just aren't there. That's okay. It has no reflection on you as a leader, as a person, as a coach, as a mentor, as a anything, none. At the end of the day, we are here to inspire the people who are looking for the inspiration. 
we are here to help coach and guide and ask those engaging questions. What have you done in your business? Oh, you can't get any sales? Okay, great. So let's brainstorm. Okay, so what have you tried? Have you tried doing a Facebook social? Have you tried doing a bag party? Have you reached out to some former um, hosts and ask them if they're interested in hosting, hosting again, or if they know somebody who might be interested in hosting. We need to be having those conversations and asking those open-ended questions, those engaging questions that are going to solicit that whole dialogue that's, that's going to happen. And that's how you're going to inspire somebody. That's how you're going to reach somebody, not by trying to motivate them because you're not going to be able to remember what we have to do is inspire them. Find that shared meaning, find that team culture. And that's gonna be your guide through this journey. We got this leaders, this is the way, we got this. <laughs>